Scott. <clears throat> we have been investigating very serious charges made about your department and other elements of the Biden administration, which allege ignoring the law to protect political allies from being held accountable for their wrongdoing. One aspect of this allegation, brought by two very credible whistleblowers from the IRS, demonstrates a strategy of delaying criminal investigation into Hunter Biden and blocking any investigations into the corruption of Joe Biden. The whistleblower testimony notes that U.S. Attorney David Weiss in November 2022 allowed the statute of limitations to expire, even though Hunter Biden's attorney had already agreed to extend the statute on the 2014 and 2015 charges, which charges included an attempt to evade or defeat taxes and the fraud and false statements related to the million dollars that Burisma paid to Hunter Biden while his father was vice president. During a recent transcribed interview with the committee, FBI officials from the Baltimore field office refused to answer questions about the expired 2014 and 2015 tax charges because they were allegedly part of a quote, ongoing investigation. Are the tax charges related to these years in fact part of an ongoing investigation? Uh, again, I have no familiarity with the details of this particular okay. investigation. So you don't know one way or the other? That's right. I left right. it up to Mr. So how Weiss. are charges for which the statute of limitations have already expired part of an ongoing investigation? Again, I, I, I don't know anything about this case. In so, why would, so why would charges that have already expired because of the statute of limitations be part of an ongoing investigation? In a, in the hypo, to answer in the hypothetical, because I don't know the facts, often charges from previous times are used as part of an ongoing investigation to inform information about intent, about patterns and or practices. Or other investigations? So are there other investigations into Hunter Biden where this information may become relevant? I think it's a, a matter of public record that there are, is a tax investigation of Mr. Uh, Hunter Biden with respect to other years. I Beyond don't the 2014 and 2015? Beyond the ones that are, um, uh, where this, that you are referring to, I think okay, the, Mr. Garland, Mr. Weiss has already said that in, uh, uh, during the plea proceeding. Okay, Mr. Garland, is it standard operating procedure in your Department of Justice for prosecutors to allow the statute of limitations to expire on very serious crimes when the potential debt defendant has already agreed to an extension? So there, as I said before, there's no standard operating procedure okay. here. This Maybe is Maybe there should be. Well, this, if this is an oversight hearing, maybe there should be. This, maybe you should adopt standard operating procedures to avoid this kind of a circumstance. Would you agree? No. Okay. Because it's left According to, to the one discretion of, the IRS, of... You've answered my question. Thank you. Okay. According to one of the IRS whistleblowers, quote, the purposeful exclusion of the 2014 and 2015 tax years sanitized the most sub substantive criminal conduct and concealed material facts, end quote. How can Americans trusted investigation run by a special counsel who by allowing the statute of limitations to expire irreversibly, quote, sanitized the most substantive criminal conduct and concealed material facts? The prosecutor in question is an experienced veteran career prosecutor who was appointed by and President- And we have no reason to trust him, do we? By President Trump. Okay. How much in terms of taxes would Hunter Biden have owed on the $1 million he was paid by Burisma? Well, as you can imagine, since I don't know anything about the facts of the case, I can't answer Probably that question. Probably about $400,000. Isn't that right? I mean, you can do the math. You know the tax code. I don't know anything about the facts of this case, okay. so I'm not able to do the math to apply it to and facts. And by failing to know. pay the taxes on those ill-gotten gains, what would the typical penalty have been, for example, if it was someone who didn't have the last name of Biden or a D behind their name? I'm sorry. These are all questions you'll have to direct to Mr. Weiss, and Mr. Weiss will address in, in his final... Um, by allowing the statute of limitations to lapse, did Mr. Weiss effecti effectively gift the tax money Hunter Biden owed for the 2014 and 2015 tax years to Mr. Biden? Just say again, the decisions about uh, whether um, uh, in this area and whether these allegations are correct are ones 
uh, that Mr. Weiss uh, will be able to answer. Mr. Garland, you, one of the things you have done over and, uh, and repeated over and over and over again is that to point out that Mr. Weiss was appointed as U.S. Attorney by President Trump, yes. as though that somehow inoculates him from criticism by us. Is that really how this game is played? That if someone is appointed by a Republican, then they're supposed to be on the Republican team? Or the, if they're appointed by a Democrat, they're on the Democrat team? You were appointed by Mr. Biden, weren't you? Are you on the Democrat Let team? Let me just be clear. The, the point of, that, he's a, that he was appointed by a Republican counteracts the claim that he, this was a partisan decision to benefit Democrats. He, he remained I'm as, a, as, as a member of the Department of Justice. Mr. Chairman. I'm Mr. Chairman. I'm the gentlelady has expired. The uh, gentleman from Maryland is recognized again for a unanimous consent request. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to offer into evidence the testimony or segments of the tech testimony of uh, Thomas Sobosensky, dated September 7th. Uh, it was taken here and uh, before this committee. Goes to the deconfliction issue with respect to Hunter Biden's security detail and the search warrant. Uh, Without objection. Executors. Thank you. Chair, now recognize the gentleman from California. Good afternoon, Mr. Attorney General. Uh, do you believe Christopher Wray is a competent director of the FBI? I think Mr. Wray is a person of the highest integrity, for whom I have great admiration, who has extraordinary experience, uh, both as Thank a you. career and so you, prosecutor. Thank you. You certainly don't think he would knowingly give false testimony to this committee, do you? I, sir, I am sure that he would not. Are you aware that uh, Director Wray, a couple months ago, in sworn testimony, implicated you in a sweeping abuse of power? I doubt he would characterize whatever, you, uh, whatever he said in that way. Well, he testified about the school board memo that you issued uh, on October 4th of 2021, uh, in which you mobilized federal law enforcement powers against American parents. Now, of course, you didn't put it quite like that. Uh, instead, you found a pretext, which is stated right here in the first line of the memo. In recent months, there has been a disturbing spike in harassment, intimidation, and threats of violence against school administrators, board members, teachers, and staff. What was your basis for making that claim? I will say again, as I've testified numerous times in response to exactly the same question, that I, I um, saw numerous uh, reports in the press of violence and threats. You saw reports in the press, and so you decided to instigate a nationwide law enforcement initiative? If I may be permitted to answer the question. Please. Uh, numerous reports in the media of violence and threats of violence against school personnel of all kinds. We did, received, you, did you consult we, with the FBI director? We received a letter from the National Association of School Boards reporting. Yes, that letter contained anecdotes. It didn't contain data of an increase. Did you, yes or no, consult with the FBI director before issuing the memo? I don't believe I spoke with the FBI director, no. Why not? Why wouldn't you consult with the FBI director? Because the purpose of the memo as is very clear from the memo, is to ask the FBI to assess the situation, to hold meetings, and to determine whether Mr. this Attorney was- Mr. Attorney General, threat. you started with a conclusion that there was an increase uh, in threats. Now, if you had bothered to consult with the FBI director, here's what he would have said. This is from his sworn testimony, that he was not aware of any such evidence. So my question to you, sir, sitting here today, is can you substantiate your claim that there was an increase? Of course, there will always be criminal, sporadic criminal activity in all quarters of society, but your claim was there was an increase. Can you substantiate that sitting here today? I can substantiate that by the reports in the press of violence and threats of violence and by the letter sent by representatives of thousands. That's a no. You're giving us anecdotes. I'm asking you if you had data. You also said in your memo uh, that you were committed to using the department's authority and resources to discourage these threats, identify them when they occur, and prosecute them when appropriate. Were there any such prosecutions? The emphasis should be there on when appropriate, and there were no such prosecutions, and that's good news, not bad news. There were no prosecutions, and in fact, Director Ray said there were no arrests, there were no charges. So you have no data to show us that there was any increase. You didn't even bother to consult with the FBI director, and then there were no resulting prosecutions, even though you said that they were coming. So I have to ask you now, in retrospect, was there a compelling law enforcement justification for the memo? I think you're mischaracterizing the memo. The, question, the purpose of the memo was to hold meetings, to open lines of communication with state. So is that a no? Yes or no? Was there a compelling law enforcement justification for the memo? I believe there was a, a reason to 
ask for those contacts to be made with state and local law enforcement. Well, the FBI director disagrees with you. When well, I that's asked not what the FBI director said. Look at I'm it right sorry. here, uh, Mr. Attorney General. When asked, do you have any reason to dispute the conclusion that there was no nationwide law enforcement justification? He said he didn't. Either he didn't see the reports or he didn't see the national. This is a transcript. School. I've sent you this transcript, Mr. Attorney General. So my question is this. Will you retract the memo? And by that, I mean issue a formal document to the effect that it is no longer operative. I will not because there was absolutely nothing wrong with the memo, as I have testified several times already. Even though your own FBI director says there was no justification for it, you will not retract it. The memo is mine. It's my decision whether it's necessary to make assessments like this. And I asked the Bureau to make these assessments and the other- Are you familiar with the concept of a chilling effect? I'm sorry, I didn't- Are you familiar with the concept of a chilling effect? I'm very familiar, and that's the very reason- How would you define a chilling effect is, as it relates to First Amendment jurisprudence? That is the very reason why the second sentence of the memo- says Please that, tell me what you do, uh, consider to be the definition of a chilling effect. That memo has no chilling effect. The I didn't ask you your opinion on whether the memo has one. I asked you what is a chilling effect. I'm telling you that the second sentence of that makes clear I've read that the full memo. I'm asking you what do you define a chilling effect as? A chilling effect is when um, um, people's uh, exercise of First Amendment rights are chilled by coercive activity by the government, which did not occur here. So here we're dealing Mr. with moms and Mr. dads. Mr. Chairman, you and I point of order officials. with respect to the time? Yeah. Point of order? The, the gentleman's time has expired, but it was a pretty darn important question when the Attorney General of the United States can't define what a chilling effect is, so I thought it would let it go a few seconds. The, uh, uh, the Attorney General did define what a chilling effect is and said it didn't occur here. I don't think he defined it. He just, he just dismissed it. Uh, the gentleman's time has expired. I thought it was a very important five minutes. We now recognize the gentlelady from Florida for five minutes.